Good morning, Jen. And at this hour, we're going to focus on the homelessness aspect of this. The fact she's putting $1.3 billion toward addressing this crisis. Now, this is a record amount, her office says, but the question some people have is how does that number translate into help now for the crisis that has unfolded on our streets, particularly in one area that recently made the news. Our Phil Schumann asked her about that. Listen. What is your message today to people, for example, on San Vicente who are afraid to go out their door while you work on these big picture plans? Well, my message to them is going to be direct because I'm going to go talk to them specifically. But my message would be help is on the way. The issue is getting the rooms in that area. And if not there, then in another area. So I want them but to know that we question? are actively working on that as soon as we can get the rooms. I can't tell you a date. All right, so specifically take a look at some of what that $1.3 billion toward homelessness entails. It includes $250 million for the Inside Safe program with the goal of housing 17,000 people, $160 million to pay for and acquire motels to reduce future program costs, $72 million for staffing, including property managers, case managers, support services, and another $21 million to develop transitional and permanent housing, plus the establishment of a 12-month rental assistance program. And and uh, this is part of the $13 billion budget in all. Mike Trujillo is a political strategist and joins us live now. Thank you for being with us. Hearing what you just heard and knowing what you know and being the expert that you are in this space, what is your take and big takeaways on what you propose surrounding homelessness? Well, I think it's big, it's bold, and it's Karen Bass. Um, her budget is historic, and it's the right thing to do to get critical services for our unhoused residents to get them off the street and back on their feet. Do you think that it addresses everything it needs to in order to take action as soon as possible? Well, you need the federal government, the county, and the state, and the city to come together to actually get this right. And what Karen is doing, or Mayor Bass is doing, is putting a massive down payment, the, the, a big step forward on doing the right thing. How would you compare the money, her office called this a record-breaking number, how would you compare this to what we've seen in past administrations? I mean, their office is correct. It's record-breaking. Um, it shows that she's taking this issue seriously. She knows she has to solve it if she wants to get reelected, and this is exactly what you needed to be doing in the first 100 days. In terms of what the money's going toward, are those all the right places? Anything else you'd add to that? I mean, it's a you need constant wraparound services. Every unhoused person has a myriad of problems, whether it's drug or alcohol, whether it's just not being able to afford your home. Um, so all of the things that need to like get people off the street and back on their feet is necessary. It's a 180 degree or 360 degree uh, perspective, and that's what you see in that budget. We appreciate your perspective and your time. Uh, Mike Trujillo, political democratic strategist. And now coming up in the next hour, um, we're going to talk to him again about the LAPD component of this because that was another big part of this budget. The LA City Council, um, they're going to have about the next month or so to decipher whether they're going to approve all parts of this budget and kind of, you know, make any changes that they want to make. The homelessness part has a lot of support. The LAPD part is a little bit more controversial. And so we'll talk about all of that coming up at 8. I'll throw it back to you. All right, Christina, thank you very much.